how are y'all doing on this wonderful Wednesday, my good people? I hope that y'all are doing swell and well. I hope that y'all are having a wonderful Wednesday. I am back with another episode. For those of you who are new to the podcast, welcome back. For those, I say welcome back. For those of you who are new to the podcast, welcome. For those of you who are returning, welcome back to Southern Therapy Podcast. I am your host, Danielle Bailey, and I am just excited to be here on this wonderful Wednesday. Okay. Like I'm excited to be on top of the ground and the ground not on top of me is what my grandma used to say. Okay. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about today's, um, topic. Well, I'm not gonna say I'm excited about today's topic, but today's topic was a eye opening in, um, it's eye opening. Yes. It's super duper eye opening. And I want to say that it was revealed to me, like I'm recording this on Tuesday. Like it was revealed to me on Tuesday. And it's like a topic that I want to, you know, like I want to share with you guys and I want you guys to, you know, like look at your own life and see as well too, or whatever, you know, just or whatever. So today's topic is food is my idol. And I know y'all are just like, wow, like you really saying that food is your idol. Like how did that happen? And so I want to go into all of that. Like, yo, food is my idol. And that took me a while to say, because it was just like, nah, food ain't my idol. Like I would, why would I even say that? Why would I even do that? You know, I would not make, no, like that's, I know that that's wrong. That's, that's against the religion to have all these idols and all this other kind of stuff. And so like when I really sat down and sat with myself and sat in prayer, um, it came up. Food is your idol. And so, um, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how it became my idol, um, the whole circumstances around it and why I think it's my idol and stuff like that. So like, yo, if this is a topic that, you know, you're interested in, by all means settle, um, settle in. And before I get off of here, I'm going to tell you how to fight that. Okay. How to fight your idols and stuff like that. So, um, I want to just say shout out to everybody who is doing the 21 days to financial freedom fast. Um, we are going, we are on day three. By the time y'all hear this will be day three. It is day two and God is already speaking. Okay. I don't know if he's speaking to nobody else, but he is speaking to me. Um, me and, and truthfully like the fast is what revealed to me that food is my idol. Um, so I am praying. I am going before the Lord. I am fasting and he is talking okay he like come on sis get it together okay so let's just go ahead and dive right on into today's topic um so I want to talk about how it came about so this morning um for the last two days like I have been hearing the word fight and I'm like fight okay you know fight but it's like it just it was like fight fight Danielle I need you to fight I need you to fight I'm like fight what you know like what and so um as I was I was going on yesterday I was just like I just ignored the word fight or whatever just dropped my spirit fight and so um so just coming up like late last night like this morning or whatever like yesterday I was just like yo because I'm having like some health concerns too so y'all pray for me um I'm having some health concerns and so I was just like um I think I should go vegan. And so like, I've been trying to debate on whether or not I should go vegan, um, more of a plant-based diet, just really and truly trying to do my own research and understanding, um, plant-based diet. I started looking into Dr. Sebi, Sebi, however you say his name. Um, I've been looking into him and he talks about how African Americans should be vegetarians and stuff like that. And so just really trying to understand my body and like, truth be told y'all like food is just like, oh my God. It's, and it's not even about weight anymore. It's about me not being able to have self-control, you know? Um, oh, if I want this, I'll eat this. And truth be told, like, yo, this is going to be a very transparent episode. Now that I think about it. I have gained so 
oh, I have gained weight or whatever. And so like so much weight or whatever. And so it's just like, okay, because I have not practiced any type of self-control. I have just been like, oh, okay, we in the house. Well, we gonna eat. Well, you know, we in the house that we gotta eat, you know, blah, 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 this. Whatever it was, like no self-control, no self-discipline, no nothing. And like, y'all, I get to the point to where I hate eating out. Like I've ate out so much and it's just like, yo, I'm tired of eating out. You know, like I'm over that. I don't want that. And then it just be like, yeah, I, I would have to call my friend and I'd be like, yo, what you eating today? And so she was just like, uh, I don't know what, whatever. Like in the beginning of this quarantine, I was cooking because I just didn't trust anybody. So as the quarantine started going on, I was like, ah, forget it. Let me go out to eat. Like, let me grab something to eat, pick it up, do the safety measures, you know, change it from, um, put it, you know, bring the food home, put it in the paper plate, like take it out of their containers, put it in my new container, whatever, whatever. And so like, I'm practicing all of those safety precautions. And so I just start eating out more. At first I was eating in, I was cooking, doing whatever, you know, it was good. Then I went to the eating out. And so I was just like, whatever. So like now I just have like nothing excites and, and it shouldn't look food excites me okay like yo <laughs> food excites me and so um like nothing was exciting anymore no none of the food none of the where i was going and like yo food is an emotional i have an emotional attachment to food and so it's just like yo all of this is bring coming back up in my spirit and so i'm um and so like i was just like okay as I'm thinking like maybe I should go vegan um, so that I can get like on a plant-based diet so that, you know, like my whole digestive system could work because the body is supposed to heal itself. Like we are supposed to operate on, um, on natural medicines and stuff like that. So the body has the ability to heal itself, but we continue to put toxins in our body. And toxin come way of the food that we eat, the, 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 the sugars that we consume. So it's like, I know that I know that the body has the ability to heal itself. So how can I get my body? I need to get my body back into the state where it can actually heal itself. Um, so I was just like, okay, so maybe I should go vegan because I've heard so many great things about veganism. And it's just like, but I don't want to go vegan. Like, I feel like I'm going to miss some of the good food and all of this. And then I don't want to try because I fail. I try diet exercises and then I fail. I try it. And it's just like, it's so much. So I was just like, yeah, I kind of gave up hope. Like, no lie. No lie. I'm not going to lie. I've get, I gave up hope on all together and just with the whole weight loss thing. I was just like, hey, I'm just going to be fat. I'm just going to be fat. That's, that's, that's my, that's the conclusion that I came up with. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be fat, just be fat or whatever, you know, like it or love it. Um, I love myself. I'm just going to be fat. And so it's just like, I've never had that attitude until recently, probably like a couple of weeks ago. I've always had like, I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to get down. And like a couple of weeks ago, it was just like, Shh, whatever, you're going to be fat, sis, accept it. Like, yo, <laughs> and like. And I was just like, okay, you know, so it's just going to be fat or whatever. But like, it's not about whether or not I have low self-esteem, but what I am, what I am saying right now is, is more so about self-control It's more so about understanding why is food my idol? Where is this coming from? How can I, I need to understand what's going on and my body is responding in a negative way. So how can I fix this? you know? And so like, so of course the word fight had been ringing in my spirit. So, um, yesterday, I believe, yeah, let me put my notes together. So yesterday I came across this scripture and like, so let me get the script. Let me pull the scripture for you guys. Okay. And so it just really, I was like, okay, wait a minute. So I came across this scripture and it said, it's 1 Corinthians 9 and 25. It says, everyone competes in the game, goes into a strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. And so with me reading this, right, this is what it says. I got it offline. Um, this is this is what it says, you know, like verbatim. It says everyone competes in the game, goes into strict training. When I saw that 
in my brain and how I read it and how I interpreted it, everyone goes into a fight, but they go before the fight, they go into strict training. Like that's how I read it. So mind y'all, I've been telling y'all, I've been hearing the word fight in my spirit. So even though I see that it says game, I see instead of me seeing game, I see fight. And I believe that's, that is the Lord speaking to me. Like, yo, that is how God speaks, use his word and speak to you. So how I read it is everyone competes in the fight. Everyone competes in the fight, goes into a strict training. Then, yeah, you got to go into a strict training. And so I'm like, okay. So, you know, I'm, um, I got that. I got that scripture and stuff like that or whatever. And so, um, so the day go on and the day go, you know, go on yesterday or whatever. And so this morning is, is when it hit me and God was just like, yo, um, you made food your idol and you need to fight. And so I was like, okay. And so like when reading on, um, with, uh, men, the men, the people who are doing a 21 day fast, we have a, um, Facebook group. And so yesterday, a lot of people were talking about how they wanted to learn more about self-discipline and all of this other kind of stuff. So, well, yesterday I recorded a lot of content for that group or whatever. So, you know, it's different prayers that I pray is this is different scriptures and stuff like that. And so like, I have been recording a lot of content on Monday. Right. And so like, as I was recording and as I were praying, so for day two, which today is day two, which is Wednesday, I mean, not Wednesday, but Tuesday, for day two, I was led to those scripture about self-control. And so, you know, so I start really and truly praying the prayer of self-control. So, you know, I prayed that prayer, I made that video. And so people had started posting after I had already prayed the prayer earlier that morning. And so like, I was just like, oh, y'all, I'm so like, I was like, you know, the spirit led me to pray about self-control this morning. So, you know, y'all going to tomorrow when y'all get the video, it's going to be pumped, you know, whatever, whatever, just excited at the fact that I pray for self-control on Tuesday. And now I get into this group and I see people are struggling with discipline with their finances. I'm like, okay, yeah, God got me going into the right direction. Right. So then get up this morning. Not only is he saying, yo, this is not just for them. This is for you too, sis. So God is just like, yo, you have made food your idol. And you have given up hope with even trying to correct that. And so I was just like, okay, God. And so he was like, I need you to fight. This is going to be the fight of your life, Danielle. This, and I know y'all may be like, Danielle, it's not that big of an issue. It's just food, cut it out. But for me... It is a big issue. I have so many emotional attachment when it comes to food. It's not even funny. Like when I sat down and I started thinking about it in my prayer time, I was just like, when I'm excited, I go eat. When I'm bored, I go eat. Like, and I, and I immediately, when God was saying that food is your idol, like I immediately got sad, like really and truly I had got sad because it's like, Yo, you're taking the enjoyment away from me. So, like, what else am I going to do now? And so, I was just like, you know, like, that's one thing that I can control. So, now, like, what I'm going to do? You didn't took that away from me. You know, how I'm, what I'm going to eat. Like, all of this other kind of stuff that just started going through my brain and started going through my mind. And um, I was just like, and I got sad because, like, you telling me that food is my idol. I'm not sad because, you know, I should be sad because, oh, you put no idol before God. I'm sad because now I got to tear down the idol. That's what I'm sad about. Not even that the fact that, you know, hey, you put this, you put this idol before God. You need to be sad about that. I'm like, so what I'm going to do, Jesus? What I'm going to do now? I don't got no, I don't, you taking away my food. You know, we, you know, I'm from Louisiana. You know how we get down. You know how the food, the, the, the taste and all of this other kind of stuff that's going on. Like, yo, I'm uh, uh, having a real fat girl moment. Okay. And you telling me you got to take that away. What I'm going to eat? Lettuce? You know, like, how is that food going to taste? Like, yo, what's... Jesus, this is you. Are you show? Sure? Am I hearing you right? And it's just like, yep, you're right. You're right. And so then after I, you know, like I began to see, I was like, how did food become my idol? 
and it was it was I was like you know I would nor, normally I would have never put food before me if I you know consciously I would have never put food as an idol but I did it was so easy to make food an idol it was so easy and then understand that under all of this like food being an idol is heart problems i read this one article um because i had really and truly started researching and the woman said at the root at the root of my food problems are heart issues that can't be diagnosed or excused by a doctor yo when i tell you that that stopped me in my tracks when she said at the root of my food problems are heart issues I was just like, okay, okay, sis, like the root issue, I tell all my clients all the time, for those of you that don't know, I'm a mental health therapist, like we got to figure out the root issue. And so when she said that, I was just like, that's it. Food has become a coping mechanism for me. Food has become something that um instead of dealing with my problems or instead of taking my problems over to god instead of addressing them like i should or instead of accepting this or accepting that i have ran to food and a lot of americans run to food that's why we're obese yo when i say i'm like wow okay like just just mind blown like it is heart issues that i'm dealing with so honestly i'm thinking about trying to go and find i seen this woman um what is it? i seen this woman she's a therapist and so she also is a food strategist so honestly i'm thinking about um she's in texas I, um maybe in about august cuz i got some stuff that's coming up in december that's um going to financially take me do some stuff um maybe in about august if she I'm, I'm gonna reach out to her to see if um i can speak with her about um the food my food issue and stuff like that and to just really and truly speak to her about like really get to the issues get to the underlying issue of my heart problems my heart issues what is it like i'm still going to go to god in prayer and god ask god to re- you know like um between and that like the reason another reason why you know i'm trying to um I want to wait until my August is because I want to give, I want to be able to take this to God in prayer. I want to be able to pray about it. I want to be able to make sure that I be led to the right person um, for this or whatever. Somebody that really and truly can help me. Like I am going to go to a therapist, like no lie. I see my clients when I work with my own clients, how excited, how much breakthroughs they have. Like, yo, I'll be like, need to be like that you know like i want i want to be able to have that experience or whatever like they be having so many breakthroughs or whatever and so and since this is something that's really and truly have been you know like revealed to me today i need to start working on it i need to start working on how i made food my idol how how to correct it how to change it you know um and i need to also pray about whether or not i need to go to a vegan lifestyle i really do think that right now i don't want to say that i want to go to vegan because it's the hot thing to do but i want to go to i want to try it because i want to i want to get healthier and i want to i want my body to heal itself more importantly, out of anything, I want my body to heal itself. And I know that, you know, you can't take in so much toxic, toxic foods. You know, we got so many pesticides and the, even, even in a fruit, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's, this is a journey that I'm going to have to go through, you know? And so, um, understanding it a little bit more so i want i'm a research of course um if y'all can email me like if anybody out there that is like a vegan or a veterinarian i'm not veterinarian a vegetarian um but you are somebody that has went towards a plant-based diet or somebody you know like email me let me know where to go i know that youtube university is going to be my best friend um so i'm not tripping about that i am really and truly going to start um 
and going going that route you know really researching recipes really starting to incorporate you know um a lot of vegan options into my um diet and stuff like that so like i'm really i'm gonna start like i'm gonna start the changes um i'm not gonna do anything that's drastic because i want this to be a change a lifestyle change not something that is a fad so you know start trying to incorporate different types of vegan options um in my um diet um slowly and surely i hope to be uh maybe like in about oh and then like it's 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 like one of the worst times sis that you trying to go to a vegan um trying to go vegan and you got the holidays coming up <laughs> but i really am going to um contact my uncle on um, my uncle on my mom's side he's a um, vegetarian and so i'm going to actually call him and talk to him about it and um just see and like he's 50 like he looks amazing when i say like like i really just met him he's like my grandfather's younger brother and when i say younger i mean he's younger than my mom and so like but he looks amazing i don't even call him uncle i just call him frank <laughs> but he looks amazing y'all to say that he's well into his 50s he's he's um he's still getting up and moving he is still athletic build like yo when i say he looks amazing and it is all because of his diet he says he he works out you know um he takes so much you know he does like supplements and not necessarily supplements but he um does different things to help abuses uh, boost up his immune system and all this other kind of stuff but like when i say like he I really am going to start talking to him. Now that I think about it, like I have people at my um disposal um to help me with this, to help me understand this a little bit more. And y'all, this is a part of the fighting. So y'all pray for me um and stuff like that. <laughs> Keep me on your prayers. So I wanted to talk about how to fight. How am I going to fight this thing and how you guys can fight too if there's something in your life where you have identified that it is a problem. And I want to say this, the reason why I keep on saying fight, you know, we got to fight for our lives um, because I also came across another scripture, right? Let me, um, let me get it y'all because I want to, I want to show y'all, I want to show y'all the word and today the word just. Um, the word of God just, just cut me up today, y'all. I mean, when I say cut your girl up, I mean cut your girl up. You hear me? Um, so let me see. Let me pull up this next. Um, okay. What? Okay. Let me pull up this next thing. Where I, okay, here we go. I got it right here. Okay. So we're going back to the definition of fighting and stuff of that nature, right? Um, here's, here's a scripture from, from Timothy. It was written by Paul. It's first Timothy, um, first Timothy chapter six and it's verse 11 and 12. All right. So it says, I'm reading from what, what version is this, right? This is the life application Bible. Okay. I'm going to give you the scripture of what the scripture said, but I'm also going to give you the breakdown of the scripture. Y'all, y'all, if y'all really trying to understand the Bible, make sure you get you a good Bible. You must get you a good Bible, a one that's going to give you a breakdown of the scripture so you really and truly can understand. I absolutely love my Bible. Um, like I said, it is the life application Bible. It's a Bible. It's a big Bible. Um, it's with large print and it's like a hundred dollars. But when I say that it's well worth the hundred dollars, it is well worth the hundred dollars. Um, I, I, I view it as a hundred dollars for a life of salvation. You do the math, you know, it, it's well worth it. So first Timothy chapter six, verse 11 and 12, it says, but you Timothy are a man of God. So run from all these evil things, Pers pursue righteousness in a godly life along with faith love perseverance and gentleness fight the good fight for the for the true faith hold tightly to the eternal life to which god has called you which you have declared so well before many witnesses okay so that is first timothy 6 11 and 12 the breakdown of that scripture goes like this 
It says, Paul used active, forceful verbs to describe the Christian life. Run, pursue, fight, hold tightly. Some think Christianity is passive religion. Whew, my God. The, that advocates waiting on God. Passive passive religion that advocates waiting on waiting for God to act. On the contrary, we must have an active faith, training, working hard, sacrificing, and doing what we know is right. Is it time for action on your part? Is it time, Danielle, for action on your part? Christian service, like, athlete, like athletes, requires training and sacrifice. Our discipline and obedience largely define whether or not we will be contributors or merely spectators. Come on. Oh, my God. How would other believers rank your contributing role to on Christ's team? Y'all, when I tell y'all that breakdown cut me like a sword today. Like when I say that thing cut me deep again, y'all. Y'all remember I said that the word fight had been in my spirit, has been resonating in my spirit for like since yesterday. So yesterday, though I heard the word fight coming up today, seeing it like this is how God, when you, when people say God speaks to you and God will speak to you through, diff, through different ways, God spoke to me in my head when I was just like, okay, why, why am I hearing the word fight? Then he used Facebook because, well, no, after he spoke to me, then I started doing the podcast. I mean, not podcast, but recording video content. And I started talking about self-control. So he's speaking again. Then I get on Facebook. And then he, um, not only did I get on Facebook, I see people say that they're struggling with discipline um, with their finances. So again, he's speaking again. And then this morning he gets up and he not only speaks, but he also goes and he confirms everything that I have been seeing through his word. I am. So the, my word for 2020 and it fits 2020 perfectly fight. You have to fight. I don't know what's on what's on the horizon, but whatever it may be on the horizon for me, I got the fight. So I'm using this podcast right here. I will remember this. So if something does happen in the future where I know that I got the fight, I'm gonna be able to remind this, and I'm gonna be able to come on here and I talk to y'all again. Y'all, we in the fighting phases, and it just keep me in your prayers, okay? Um, because it's just like, that's the word that has been resonating with my, with me and my spirit is fight. And how do you fight? How do you fight Danielle? Cause I know y'all are like, how do you fight? You, of course you don't fight against flesh and blood and all the other kind of stuff. The Bible says, you know, don't fight against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and evil spirits. So how do you fight? Step one, you read your word. Read you got to get you a good Bible, bro and sis, sis and bro. Got to get you a good Bible where you can understand it. Get you several different translations. Okay? So get you understand. I know, baby, the messenger Bible, baby, I call the messenger Bible the ghetto. Okay, that thing. <laughs> The messenger is the messenger be too trill for me sometime. I'd be like, bro, y'all over there in the lake ghetto. But like look at different translations so that you can get an understanding. Take some time out, even if it's like, you know, even if it's 30 minutes or an hour. I would really say about an hour because truthfully, y'all, y'all know I be like I ain't the first to say that I be on, I be saved every day. I'm not going to say I be saved every day, but I be in my word every day. Y'all know I'm not the first person. I wouldn't even lie to y'all like that. When I get up in my word, I get up in it, but I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best now. I know better now. I know that I need to fight. And I know that one of the ways to me fighting is reading my word. So I will start reading that more, but, um, read your word. God literally spoke. I told y'all how many times he he spoke to me earlier one day. Then he went to, you know, spoke to me again, Facebook. And now he got, when I got in my word, he confirmed everything that I was thinking and that I was feeling. He confirmed it with his word. Okay. So the word speaks. Okay. Um, number two, how you fight. 
prayer and fasting. Okay. Prayer and fasting. Again, y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm on a fast right now. And God is being able to speak. And the reason why you fast and you put you push your food away, in my case, my idol away, um, it gives God the ability to speak to you where you can hear him clear, clearly. You know, you're taking away the toxins that is clean, clearing up your mind, it's clearing up your heart and stuff like that. Like I tell people all the time, when you come to therapy and you start working through some of those cloudy issues, you're able to think better and understand better. So with me, I'm able to think better. I'm able to hear him more because I am not putting all that food and all that toxic in my body. And my body is actually going through a cleanse. So, okay, fasting. Fasting is good too, y'all, because some... Only some things can be um, broken is through prayer and fasting. That is where only some things can be broken through prayer and fasting. So we need to really and truly start developing us a fasting routine. Whether we fast every quarter, whether we fast once a month, I am doing a five. I am doing a twelve-hour fast, and y'all, truth be told, I got to get better with this with this fast because I'd be like, oh, I'm doing five a.m. to five p.m. I'm gonna do a twelve-hour fast. Well, I don't wake up to about nine sometimes, eight or nine. I'm still asleep. You know, I do about eight. I do about eight. I, I can get up at about eight or either nine. Um, I'm doing an eight hour fast. Like I'm not doing a full 12 because I'm sleep some of that time, you know? So I got to do a little bit better about that. Um, so I need to actually really and truly be awake for those 12 hours that I actually, um, you know, am fasting. I need to be awake. I, so I'm trying, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do, I'm going to do better. I'm not going to try, but so prayer and fasting. And that was revealed to me today. Like, sis, you're not even really fasting the full eight 12 hours you fasting for about eight or nine hours girl get your life but the lord still is your honor he's still pleased but i'm gonna do a little bit better though all right and so then number three you must be active in all all of this like when the word just said i just read to y'all that we must be active and not passive and what that means when you want to be active in my case i'm going to use my case you apply your, this to your life but in my case when i said that i want to destroy food as my idol that means that i need to educate myself because i want to i want to do a vegan um i want to try to go vegan or maybe pest presbyterian because you know i feel like that little seafood and i hear seafood probably be good for you but either you know so i need to pray about that either um presbyterian or vegan or vegetarian i don't know the difference between vegan and vegetarian to tell you the truth but um yeah i think one of them is without dairy one is without dairy nonetheless but yeah so i need to research i need to research uh, and get an understanding of uh, which one would be best for me. I need to pray about it. Not only do I need to research it. I need to pray about it. I need for God to show me which one is the best for me. Which one he wants me on. And which one that I can be successful. So now I'm up here researching. Now I'm up here you know um, training. This is the training ground that I'm going through. I'm going through training now. I'm going to training camp. So you know start trying different um, vegan recipes. Start cooking different vegan recipes. Start reaching out to the people that are in my circle. That could help me with this transition um too as well you know so like i said i'm gonna reach out to my uncle who can talk to me about it a little bit more um and honestly i actually have a client who has been trying to talk to me about vegan forever she talks to me about vegan all the time or whatever and so um so you know listen to her when she talk about it a little bit more um ask questions not let's say listen because i listen to her but ask questions where i can you know help re and, and and she actually has a blog too that i need to go back and reread about um how she transitioned over to vegan so you know like this is my training ground this is what i'm doing to fight you know you know declaring you know declaring over myself praying over myself um giving myself grace you know because i know that i am going to slip up it's just not an overnight thing but you know being stand stand hopeful and stand prayerful that i can actually conquer this thing that um that it'll be it it is it'll be well with my soul so you know so that's what i'm gonna try to do to fight i'm fighting this thing i'm i really am fighting this thing and so um so okay what i got 
you must educate you must be an act of all of this you must educate yourself on what you are fighting for and for you must participate in the fight earlier today i told myself i said self i said stop trying to speak the testimony before going through the test before even enduring the test okay a lot of us we be like oh we want to speak the testimony but we don't even want to go through the test so like we must participate in the fight you cannot just go to the fight and expect to win so i must actively participate i must tell myself no i must tell myself no i must gain control i must be okay with controlling my impulse and i must stay prayed up like i got to stay prayed i'm not gonna lie y'all this is i don't want to keep harping and saying that this is going to be the hardest thing of my life but i do feel like it's going to be one of the hardest things of my life and i feel like that once i'm able to control could do better with this anything in my life i can conquer anything because i've conquered one of the hardest things that i've ever had to do i have struggled with food for a long time like like i said i told y'all earlier i had given up i literally was just like oh i'm just gonna give up on this i'm just gonna just be fat and like i'm not even worried about the weight the weight is a secondary um drop off what i'm worried about like i said is healing allowing my body allowing my body the chance to heal itself that's what I'm worried about. That's what I want it to do. And so in order for me to actually allow my body to do its own thing, I have to detox it from toxins and I have to give it what it needs. Ooh. That is a word. I have to give it what it needs to thrive. Not what I desire, but what my body needs to thrive. I have to give it that. that's a word that's a word y'all like that's a word i don't know about what nobody daddy i have to give my body what it needs to thrive and i first i got to learn what my body needs to thrive so i got to be active i got to be intentional about what i what what i'm putting in it i need to research it Ooh, come on jesus so y'all this is going to be a journey so y'all come along with me of course y'all gonna come along with me um with this journey i will give you guys updates i will let you know what i have tasted what i have tried if it was good if it was not and i'll let you know when i have slipped up as well too um so and this is also a part of building generational wealth like building generational wealth is just not necessarily when we talk about generational wealth i also talk about wealth being health health is my wealth if I'm not healthy, what? There's no wealth. There's no time to build the generational wealth because I am not healthy. Okay? So, y'all, this is a part of currently building generational wealth. We are breaking generational curses and cycles. And, honestly, food has been a curse, a cycle in my family as well, too. So, um, we are currently building generational wealth over here. And what we are doing is currently building generational health which is going to equal wealth so nonetheless y'all hope that y'all enjoyed this thank y'all so much for listening to this podcast um comment below if y'all got any questions or if y'all want to recommend some suggestions please send them to your girl help your girl out okay um so thank y'all so much and lord don't forget to pray for your girl keep me on y'all prayer list too all right. Thank y'all so much for listening to the podcast. I love you guys. I will see you guys next week. Bye later. Holla. <laughs>